what we find happening uh, on, on a university campus, rather than the formation of the minds of the students, rather than teaching and learning, you find a lot of performance art, a lot of people standing and yelling. Standing and yelling is very different from teaching and learning. They can both involve expressions of views, but they're not the same thing. And when we come to think that the only purpose of every institution is in one way or another to stand and yell about oppression, then it becomes very hard for our core institutions to do their essential work. And the fact is, we need the work they do. We need universities. We need newspapers. Uh, you know, we really do. We need science. We need, we need corporate America. We need each of these institutions to do its own job. And when they all instead are doing another job, a kind of combination of politics and entertainment, um, it becomes extremely difficult for us to believe that anybody in any institution is doing anything other than trying to advance a partisan agenda. For this episode of Scholar Talks, the guiding question is how can we restore trust in American institutions? Now, Yuval Levin is a senior fellow, as well as the Beth and Revenal Curry Chair in Public Policy and the Director of Social, Cultural, and Constitutional Studies at the American Enterprise Institute. He is also the Editor-in-Chief of the journal National Affairs and is the author of three books, including The Fractured Society and A Time to Build about American culture and civil society. I am Tony Williams, Senior Fellow at the Bill of Rights Institute, and I'm pleased to welcome you to another episode of the Scholar Talks Topics in Government and Civics series. And so my first question is, you described the, de the decline of institutions as one of the great stress points causing this disunity in, in the culture war today. Can you give us some examples of an institution and why we distrust them so much? Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I, I do think it's important to look for, for hope in these kinds of moments, uh, like the kind of social crisis that we're living through. And part of what it means to look for hope is to look for diagnosis, for practical understandings of the sources of our challenges. And I do think that in our time, that means in particular looking at our institutions. Institutions often are invisible. The term is so broad that it can be a challenge to define. But I would say that I think of institutions as the durable forms of our common life. They're the frameworks, the structures of what we do together. So some institutions are organizations like a university, a hospital, a school, legislature, a company, a civic association. These are institutions that have a corporate form. They're technically, legally formalized. But some institutions are durable forms of a different kind. Maybe they're shaped by norms or laws, but they don't have that kind of corporate structure. The family, for example, is the first and foremost institution of any society. Um, you might think about the institution of marriage or a particular tradition or profession as an institution. The rule of law itself is an institution. The fact that they're durable uh, is one thing that is essential to their being institution. An institution keeps its shape over time. It changes relatively slowly. Um, incrementally, but most important, I would describe each institution as a form of, of association for a reason. What's distinct about it is that it's a form in the deepest sense. It's a structure, a shape, a contour. And so what it does is it organizes people into a particular form together, shaped by a common purpose, a goal they have in common, uh, characterized by the structure of the institution itself. Each person is given a role. Uh, in relation to the others and in relation to the goal they have together. And so you're not just a person out there in the world, you're a student in this particular school, which means you have a certain relationship to the teachers in the school, to the principal, to the other students, to the parents. The institution gives each of you a role in relation to all the others and in relation to what you're trying to achieve together. Our society just works this way. It absolutely requires institutions, anything we do together, is ultimately done through some set of institutions. But a further reason why it's important to think in terms of form is that institutions are also formative. They shape us. They shape us into a particular kind of person. The capacity of our institutions to form us in ways that allow us to do their work responsibly is really crucial. And the, the diminishment of that capacity is a big part of what's gone wrong in our society now. Right. 
Uh, and, and you touched on this just a little bit, but what role do institutions play in forming us and promoting yeah. better social interactions and, and more of a spirit of a common purpose? Yeah. So, you know, each institution in our kind of society has a purpose. It, it plays some particular role. Um, and, you know, maybe that purpose is to educate children. Maybe it's to enforce the law. Maybe it's to provide a particular product or, 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 or service in society. And in, in performing that task, it also shapes the people within it to do it in a particular way, to do it responsibly, to do it reliably. It, it builds an ethic. Um, and oftentimes our trust in institutions is a function of our sense that it does build that ethic. We trust a business because it seems to promise quality and reliability and it forms people who take that really seriously. We trust a profession because it imposes rules or standards on its members and it seems like those members take it seriously. So ideally, when a professional, you know, when a scientist says something, you have a sense this has been through a process of verification. But more and more often in our time now, we have lost that sense, that confidence that when a scientist says something, to take that example, that this person is saying it because their professional work has enabled them to prove it. Or when a journalist says something, that it's been through a process of verification. Um, increasingly now, we find that rather than be formed by the institutions they're part of, a lot of people in our society are using those institutions as platforms for themselves, for their own promotion, uh, to build their social media following, to build their own brand, as we say now. And that makes it very hard for us to know who to trust and what to believe, so that the loss of institutional integrity is really central to the loss of trust that we all feel in our society. Right. And yeah, and so I was going to ask you about a, a little bit more about that. How have institutions become platforms for that self-promotion for even that performative sort of moral outrage rather than the healthy civic organizations that, that promote that common purpose and service and, and so forth? Well, I think a lot of powerful people in various institutions in our society have come to see those institutions not as imposing constraints on them but as precisely providing them with a platform to be elevated, to be promoted, to, uh, to, to, to build their following. Um, generally speaking, participating in the work of an institution should feel a little constraining. You're not just out there doing what you want. You have a role, you have a job. You're the CEO or you're the worker or you're the student, or you're the teacher. And that means there are certain things you do and certain things you don't do. Now, this is really important to building trust because actually, one of the most important things about trust, one of the most important sources of trust is a sense that the other person is constrained. We trust somebody when we feel like there are things this person would never do to me, right? So you might trust an accountant, not just because he knows the tax laws, but because he's not gonna sign his name to something that he doesn't think is true. Uh, when, when that's no longer the case, when you no longer can really believe that people are constrained by the institutions they're part of, but you think they just use those institutions to elevate themselves, it's very, very hard to trust them. And we see that transformation from people seeing institutions they're part of as molds and constraints to seeing them as platforms or stages. You see it all over American life now. Obviously, in politics, think, for example, about, uh, about Congress. Being a member of Congress means having a particular role to play. But increasingly, a lot of members of Congress run for office not so much to be involved in that internal legislative work as to have a particularly prominent platform in the culture war, a place to stand and be seen and build a following and get a good time slot on, on cable news. And that means that they're using the institution to, to promote and elevate themselves. They're using it as a place to perform. Mm. And whatever that makes them, it isn't a legislator, right? And in fact, you find people openly saying that when they run for office, I promise you, I'm not going to work with the other party. Well, Congress is a place where you work with the other party. There are a lot of places in American life where you don't have to do that. You could try to get another job. But if you're running for Congress, you're running to be part of the work of an institution. And when people aren't willing to do that, the institution and those people become impossible to trust. We see, we've seen the same kind of transformation in the presidency, where our presidents think of themselves more as celebrities than as bound by the constraints of executive power. We've seen it outside of politics. You think about journalism 
as a profession with a lot of constraints and a lot of layers of, of, uh, of, of, of formation. But now, I mean, you just check on Twitter, you'd find a lot of journalists using the, the capital of their institutions as a way to build their own following and just standing out there on their own, on a stage, performing as individuals. That makes them very hard to trust. You see scientists do this, you see corporate executives do it. Everybody feels like the work they should be doing is culture war performance. You know, we support that law too, or we're for voting rights too. Well, okay, but you know, you make shoes. Why do I care what you think about voting rights? It's impossible now to just make shoes, right? You have to be out there saying what your politics are all the time. And that's what society looks like when institutions become platforms um, instead of being formative venues, ways of shaping people to do a particular kind of work. Right. And, you know, I, I like to joke that even my, my, my donuts and my sneakers and my coffee and, and what have you are part of the culture war, but it's right. not really that funny, right? They are a part of it. Uh, they've made themselves part of it. And um, it's not funny. It's very hard now to get away from the culture war. And that makes it very hard for us to live together. You know, we're always going to have to live with people who don't think the way we do. And we shouldn't make that hard, harder than it needs to be. It has to be possible to work with somebody or to go to a doctor or to go to a business, even if those people voted the other way than I did. Once that becomes impossible, life in a free society becomes impossible. Yeah. And, it, you know, I, I find it personally also just very fatiguing. You know, it's tiring. So just kind of constantly be, being bombarded by this daily and especially on social media. Uh, it, it's really tiring. Um, yeah. yeah. But, but these are some great examples from the book, which is just really, really fascinating. And so can you provide a, a few more examples of this decline and maybe explain, you know, why it's occurred in these institutions? Yeah, you know, I think examples often have this shape where rather than having an internal institutional life where you work together around a common purpose, institutions come to be outward facing all the time. They become transparent. Um, and all they're doing is performing for an outside audience. And so what happens uh, it, within a congressional committee room is really just a way of producing YouTube clips. Um, what we find happening uh, on, on a university campus, rather than the formation of the minds of the students, rather than teaching and learning, you find a lot of performance art, a lot of people standing and yelling. Standing and yelling is very different from teaching and learning. They can both involve expressions of views, but they're not the same thing. And when we come to think that the only purpose of every institution is in one way or another to stand and yell about oppression, then it becomes very hard for our core institutions to do their essential work. And the fact is we need the work they do. We need universities, we need newspapers. Uh, you know, we really do, we need science, we need, we need corporate America. We need each of these institutions to do its own job when they all instead are doing another job, a kind of combination of politics and entertainment, um, it becomes extremely difficult for us to believe that anybody in any institution is doing anything other than trying to advance a partisan agenda. And it is very hard to trust people with power in our society if it seems to us that all they're doing is advancing their own agenda. So I think the, the, the crisis of trust that we're living through is very deeply connected to this idea of institutions. And we can't really understand it unless we grasp this complicated concept of what an institution does and what it's for. And by grasping that, we can also begin to see how we could turn things around, how we could make things better, which really does begin with ourselves as individuals operating within the institutions that we're part of. Right, and, and that leads us to our original question and, and perhaps the most important one in this discussion, right? How can we restore the health and trust of American institutions, those institutions that, that you noted are suffering real problems. Yeah, I, I think the key to that really does begin with each one of us. We can't look at this problem and say other people are behaving badly, that's certainly true. But the fact is we're all doing this in one way or another. And the way to turn it around has to begin with a very simple question that takes our institutional responsibilities seriously. The question is, given my role here, how should I behave? Given that I am a parent or a neighbor or a worker or an employer, a teacher or a student, given that, 
given that I'm a member of Congress or a journalist, how should I behave? Not just what do I want, not just what am I after, but given the particular role I have in this situation, what should I be doing? I think we all have the experience in our lives of that kind of question being very formative in a, in a morally reinforcing kind of way. You know, you're sitting in the car and somebody cuts you off and you're about to yell what you think about them. Then you realize, I, I'm a parent and I've got three kids back there. I'm just not going to say that. That's in a way what we should all be doing in large swaths of our lives now is, is say, well, you know, I'm a member of Congress. Maybe I just shouldn't be saying this. Maybe I should actually do something else here. Or I'm the president. Maybe my job here is to be above this particular thing. And it, it, whether it's in, in the workplace, whether it's in our religious communities, whether it's in the university um, or just in our, in our neighborhoods, we have to ask ourselves, given the role that I am asked to play here, what should I be doing? That very small question can be the beginning of a kind of transformation of assumptions and attitudes. And then we have to demand that other people in our society ask that question too, that people with real power um, ask that question too and say, you know, I, I'm, I'm the CEO of this company. Should I really be using it as a platform to show that I am, uh, you know, in this party or that party? Probably not. Um, and, and to hold people accountable for the ways in which they fail to ask that simple question, because ultimately that question points to responsibility. And responsibility is a lot of what we're lacking, taking ownership not only of our privileges in American life, but of our obligations too, that always come with them. To be a citizen in a republic is to recognize that you've got obligations to other people. And I think a loss of, of uh, institutional responsibility often looks like a loss of that kind of sense of obligation. And so we have to start with that very simple question and let it lead us in the direction of various kinds of institutional reform that create incentives for asking the question, that create incentives for responsibility. I think trust is gonna be a function of demonstrated responsibility. And that means the problem is not that people don't trust institutions. The problem is that the institutions are not trustworthy. And the way to change that has gotta be from within. Well, that is really important suggestions. And, and as you're saying, you know, we have rights and freedoms, but we also have uh, important responsibilities and duties in society. So Yuval, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on this episode of Scholar Talks. Please check out our other interviews in the Topics in Government and Civics series on our channel.